بس ناو وي هاف دكتور محمد سيد مورفيلد دبي برانش دكتور محمد سامعني؟ اه سامع حضرتك يو كان ستارت بليز دو يو سي ماي سلايدز؟ يس فيري كلير اول حاجه السلام عليكم ورحمه الله ثانك يو سو ماتش فور اكستندينج ذا فيري كايند برزنتيشن اتس ماي اونر تو سبيك بيفور يو توداي اند يعني اليمن ليها معزه خاصه في قلب كل عربي ف يعني ثانك يو سو ماتش فور ذا ايم هامبلد باي يور كايندنس اند باي ذا انفيتيشن ذات واز اكستندد تو مي توداي وي ار جوينج تو توك اباوت ذا احمد كلير باث ديفايس and um, how uh, we can render glaucoma drainage implant surgery less invasive. Um, so uh, financial disclosures, I received the lecture fees and honoraria from New World Medical, the uh, manufacturer of uh, the Ahmed Clear Path, although not for this presentation, but in the past year um, on several uh, lectures. Um, so if we look at the um, non-valved glaucoma drainage devices, the um, you know, most uh, uh, you know, commonly used of which is the Barvel um, implant. And the Barvel implant is made of silicone and it comes in two sizes, 250 and 350 square millimeters. The Ahmed clear path is also similar in terms of the material that it's manufactured from and in terms of the surface area of the plates. The Multino, which was um, used before the barbells were introduced, and now like there is a resurgence or remarketing of Multino, um, you know, was uh, made of uh, polypropylene and the surface area of 134 and 268 uh, millimeters square. On the side here, we can see like, you know, all these um, tubes, we can see the Ahmed valve as well. Um, and we can see on the bottom, the uh, model 350 and the model 250 of the um, Ahmed clear path. So which one should I choose? You know, if, if we have that many like you know, tubes, which one should we choose? So um, let's take a look at the design of the Ahmed clear path. And again, it comes in um, two um, surface area sizes, uh, the 350 square millimeter and the 250 square millimeter. We see that the 350 square millimeter is, uh, has a winged design, just like the 350 barbell. Um, we're gonna see the difference between the 350 and the barbell 350 in a minute. Um, but what we notice about the clear path 250 is that it's actually a single quadrant um, implant, meaning that we don't have wings that go under the muscles. One of the, um, at least that's what we would like to think, one of the uh, limiting factors for pressure lowering is that part of the um, tube or part of the implant does go under the rectus muscle, limiting the size of the bleb that can form. So if we look at the clear, the, the Marvel 250, which we're gonna see in a minute, we're gonna see that it has a winged design. So some of it is still under the rectus muscle. And that's not the case for the clear path 250, which is a single quadrant implant. It is not a winged design and there are no wings that would go under the rectus muscles. So this is side by side, the clear path and the barbell um, implants uh, on top. Um, uh, there is the uh, 350 size and on the bottom is the 250 size. And we can see the difference in the design. Um, it, now with the Ahmed clear path uh, you know, design, and we can see that on the right hand side, um, we can see this, the, 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 the space between the rectus muscle insertion and the wing of the device. So we see that the, three, the clear path 350 wings sit posterior to the muscle insertion point. Now let's take a look at the one on the left-hand side, which is the barbell 350. And we see how there is actually a touch between the uh, Barvel 350 wings and the insertion points of the uh, rectus muscles. So in the Ahmed clear path, the wings are away from the muscle attachment points. 
Why is this important? Because one of the most common complications that happen after glaucoma drainage implant surgery is the uh, is diplopia. So uh, theoretically, at least, and there, there, there isn't any published um, research on that, but we anticipate that like, you know, diplopia would be less with the uh, clear path 350 compared with the barbell 350, in, you know, which you see the diplopia very commonly with. So now let's place the barbell implant on top of the arm of clear path implant and see how they are different. So if we look at on the left hand side, we see that the 250, um, you know, clear path with um, the 250 barbelled on top. So anterior posteriorly, the Ahmed clear path here shown in gray is actually, um, you know, has a longer anterior posterior diameter. And the um, barbelled 250 has a longer um, horizontal diameter, which um, because of the wings, it go, they go under the muscle. So we can see that the entirety of the a clear path 250 fits in between the rectus muscles, and while the 250 barbell does go underneath the rectus muscles, and um, you know, possibly uh, limit um, the efficacy of, of uh, the tube. And all of these are like you know theoretical um, assumptions. Um, if we look at the 350 uh, designs on the right hand side, we see that the barbell uh, on top in purple has a wider uh, horizontal diameter and a shorter uh, like anthroposterior diameter. What does this signify? It signifies that more of the surface area is also under the rectus muscle compared with the 350 um, uh, armed clear path. One other um, thing that I'm not sure you um, can appreciate here, but maybe um, on this slide, you can see that here the barbell has this red ridge. This ridge is very famous for the barbell. As a matter of fact, when the tube opens, um, if you do a, a vicral 70 ligature, you know we know when the tube opens or not by whether like we can see the uh, ridge subconjunctivally or the conjunctiva is elevated over that. Now, there is a lack of ridge in the uh, two models of the clear path design. And I think this is very important in, the, in how the blebs over the, uh, or the capsules over the plate, um, you know, are shaped. Because uh, we see with the clear path more diffuse blebs than with any other glaucoma drainage implant. This is very important for like, you know, reduction of, um, you know, uh, fibrotic, uh, you know, scar formation and the um, encapsulation of the um, uh, tube or the, the, the device on the long run. Now, um, another very uh, nice feature of the clear path compared with the barbell is how malleable and flexible uh, the material that it's made from is. And um, you can actually like, you know, fold it in the finger. And this is how like, you know, the idea of the taco technique, you know, came about, which we are going to see right now. So this is my basic technique for the small incision uh, clear path 250, which I'm gonna um, talk you through um, uh, for the entire, uh, you know, video. So I place a traction suture superior temporally initially, and I put that on a uh, uh, needle holder. And then four millimeters behind the limbus, I open a four millimeter peritomy, and I make sure to extend that to the under uh, blind tenon. And I sect well under tenon in all directions. So this is a limbus-based flap. And here we make a pocket and extend that pocket on the sides. And then I inject an anesthetic with a, um, or the block. 
I don't need to always uh, here. Like we see the, uh, I folded the clear path 250 in the fingers and then I put it on a, uh, um, you know, a couple of uh, pairs of forceps and inserted it through the uh, very small incision. And here's the rib cord suture, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. And I'm tucking it under the conjunctiva. And I'm about like, you know, eight or nine millimeters behind the limbus. I take uh, eight o nylon sutures to fix the eyelets, which are beautifully anteriorly placed like Dr. Tarek Sharawi had elaborated. They are anteriorly placed and therefore they are much easier to place compared with, uh, or like, you know, to, to fix the sclera compared with the uh, either Barvelt or Ahmed or any other form of uh, tube, because uh, this is a huge advantage in the design. Then, um, you know, I would cut the tube to the appropriate length, 23 gauge needle, go back like about three millimeters behind the limbus and do an intraspleral tunnel. And then change the direction, lift up the heel of the needle and go ex exactly parallel to the iris and just insert the tube. And you know, the two, like, you know, the three millimeter tunnel does give uh, a very snug fit to the tube inside the sclera. This is, a, you know, tutoplast sclera, which comes pre-cut to this beautiful shape. And um, I just put it in. I don't need to, like, you know, put in glue or suture it or anything. It just stays in. There is nowhere for it to go. And then with only two or three interrupted uh, Sevenovarco sutures, I close the incision. And this is a procedure that virtually takes about 15 minutes to perform compared with like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour if you're going to put in a barbell and isolate the muscles and, and do all that. So this is what I call a, um, you know, the, the glaucoma drainage implant analogy to minimally invasive glaucoma surgery. This is really minimally invasive. It's very small incision. It's like only a small, um, like, you know, um, pyridomy. And we, we insert the tube and in no time we're inside the eye and closing and coming out. Now for the 350, uh, I found, even though it has some theoretical advantages over the uh, Ahmed, uh, over the Barbell 350, but to be honest, I didn't feel that the surgery was much smoother. Here is one of my colleagues at Bascom Palmer Eye Institute, Dr. Luis Vasquez. I stopped doing the 350s, so I borrowed um, his video with his permission. So he's he was trying to do it through a smaller than normal pyridomy, and um, it was a little bit awkward. You're going to see that in a minute. Um, but it's still like, you know, it's a smaller pyridomy than you would do with the Barbell 350, for example. So he was isolating, him and his fellow were isolating the rectus muscles. And they were tucking one of the wings underneath the plate and putting in the um, untucked wing underneath the uh, lateral rectus. And once that was in, they unfolded, they, they hooked the superior rectus muscle and then unhooked or unfolded the uh, other wing or the superior wing of the plate. A little bit awkward in my opinion, you can, um, if you want to do it through a small incision, or benefit from that uh, malleability or flexible flexibility of the of the plate material. As a matter of fact, what I would do in that case is just implant it over the rectus muscle rather than under the rectus muscle. And um, yeah, we have done that with the bar belt and with the uh, clear path 350 uh, with uh, with good results. Although the risk of hypotony is is uh, is higher. Now, when we are tying the Ahmed clear path um, tube, so we need to understand the difference between valved and non-valved tubes. So when you have a valve tube like the Ahmed valve, uh, you do have a mechanism by which you actually prevent hypotony. Every time the pressure drops below a certain number, theoretically eight to 10, like, you know, the valve closes 
and it doesn't allow the fluid to pass through. Now, when you have a, um, a non-valve tube, if you put in the tube and just leave it in, the pressure is gonna be zero and the eye is gonna collapse like a raisin. So you need to find the mechanism by which you can include the tube and give the body a chance to fight the foreign object that was placed on it and place some scar tissue around it to limit how much aqueous uh, egress there is. And, um, you know, so what we can do is do a ripcord suture or a vitral ligature or a combination of both. And um, although in my fellowship, I learned to only do the uh, vitral ligature, but I, um, you know, like I found it um, much more convenient for me and gives me great advantages to actually do uh, both the ripcord and the um, uh, ligature uh, at the same time. So tying the ligature around the, uh, and, and like Dr. Tarek said, it comes with a 4-0 proline uh, pre-placed suture, a ripcord suture. Now, what we um, uh, usually do is when we tie the barvel tube, we just throw a 3-1-1 knot. But, um, you know, when, what I found that a 3-1-1 knot is not enough um, to include the tube and make it completely watertight in the case of the clear path. So uh, we came up with this technique in which we create a loop, like you see on the right-hand side, uh, one time before actually throwing in the first three throws. So um, we're going to see this in the video. So I put in the vitro suture around the, the tube and like I looped it around the tube before I even started suturing. So now the loop is in and I'm going to start suturing 311. I do way more than 311. I do 311111, but that's my OCD. Like 311 is enough. Um, and you need to lay the, uh, uh, you know, the knot flat and you need to tie it with the fingers. If you tighten it with the, with the uh, straight and angle tires or with the tire in one hand and the uh, needle holder with one hand, it's not gonna be occluded. For this particular tube, you need to actually do it with the fingers. So that's a three, one, again, like, you know, tighten it with the finger. And after that, of course, you need to test it with a 30 gauge needle um, on, a, on uh, a 30 gauge cannula on BSS and make sure that it's completely watertight. Here, we're testing the tube. Here we see the air bubble or like the air column going up and down and there is no leakage, you know, um, out of, uh, you know, the, the, the tube right here. So, um, what are the special situations that the clear path can be helpful in? One of them is actually having a, a, a sclerobuckle, an encircling band, because um, this, the, the, the profile height of the clear path is the least of any glaucoma drainage implant there is. So it allows for a very smooth insertion on top of the um, uh, uh, encircling band, and you can even suture the plate to the encircling band itself, like we're gonna see here. So creating a pocket and putting in, this is a, 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 a Fornix base flap. And here, suturing the plate easily to the, with the 8 nylon, to the buckle itself. And this is very convenient. Um, in any other uh, you know, device, the, the profile would be extremely high, but because the profile of the uh, uh, clear path is very low, it allows for a very reasonable profile uh, if you put it on top of the uh, uh, scleral buckle. Now, when you have cataract surgery and you, that you want to combine with a clear path, that's also 
a very nice thing. I have several videos on my YouTube channel, 30 to 35 minutes, a total um, time for the combined FACO and uh, clear path insertion. Now, like, um, what are the changes that we need to do? We need to make a smaller capsular axis um, so that the lens stays in and it doesn't really move. Um, you know, I prefer when I do combined surgery to put in a three-piece lens because it's more stable. But um, again, you can put a, a single piece uh, IOL as well. And you have to close the uh, main incision. You take out all the viscoelastic, elastic, of course, uh, close the main incision. I prefer to close the main incision with a figure of eight, then proceed with um, surgery. You can also uh, inject some uh, myostat or myofilm in the AC. Again, this is the same taco technique, small incision, I'm at clear path, goes in very easily. You know, uh, you put in the patch graft and two to three interrupted vicral, seven of vicral sutures, and boom, you're done. And it's a beautiful surgery. Patients seeing very, very well. Many of my patients are seeing 2020 the very next day after this huge surgery, cataract surgery plus um, a clear path, because again, it's minimally invasive. It's unlike any other glaucoma tube implant that you do. It's, it's very, very uh, minimally disruptive to tissues. So what do we do in the post-operative care? Prednisolone um, is very important. I give it for a total of eight weeks, sometimes 12 weeks. Um, antibiotic drops for uh, one week. I don't use atropine routinely. I continue the glaucoma medications uh, that the patient was on until week five. The vast majority of tubes, 90% of tubes, like you know, the vicral suture would dissolve on its own, the, vi the, the vicral ligature, sometime between week five and week six. And I don't want, like, you know, if the if the pressure goes low when the when the tube opens, I don't want you to lower it further with the uh, aqueous suppressants. So I tell my patients, continue for the first five weeks with your glaucoma drops at exactly the five week mark, please stop all your glaucoma medications um, in anticipation of the tube, um, you know, partially opening. Uh, do we use a rip, do you have to use a rip cord? No, not necessarily. It adds a, uh, another layer of safety. Um, you know, a 4 would give little resistance, but some to aqueous outflow, three, Oh, proline would give the best, um, you know, um, outflow resistance while allowing some aqueous egress. If you want to completely occlude the tube and not really use, uh, like you know, a ligature at all, just put in a uh, a, a rip cord and achieve a one hundred percent water tightness. Then you need to put a two zero um, uh, proline. When do you take it out? I take it out um, if the pressure is like, you know, 10 or below 10, of course, I'm going to leave it in, like, you know, indefinitely until like, you know, I need to take it out if the pressure goes up. But if the pressure is in the mid to low teens or even in the high teens, then I take it out at about 12 to, 12 to 14 weeks after the surgery. This is how you take it out. Um, I take it out of the slit lamp. So here the patient had no tenons virtually. So I was able with only the jeweler's forceps or like, you know, the lamp tooth forceps to kind of pull it like that. Um, and um, without really cutting. So this is all at the slit lamp. And that's about it. That's how I took it out of the slit lamp. Sometimes patients would have a, um, a thicker tenon like this patient. So in that case, also at the slit lamp, give, um, ver be very generous with topical anesthesia. And then with uh, Wiscott scissors, like, you know, um, cut the conjunctiva and tenon at the, um, uh, the position of the ripcord suture. Patients typically uh, tolerate this very well. This very patient is actually a um, 97 year old or 98 year old patient. And, um, you know, he was tolerating the, the, you know, this without really any um, movement or any discomfort because like, you know, I, I, I put in a lot of topical anesthesia, 
And this is how I took it out. You don't need to suture or anything. Um, you know, so uh, I looked at results of 100 consecutive cases that had one year follow up. 31 of them had combined cataract and clear path um, uh, to 50. The mean uh, preoperative uh, IOP was uh, 22, and the mean postoperative at one year was 13.7. Uh, mean uh, pre-op number of medications was 3.2. The mean post-operative number of medications at one year was 1.9. I didn't have any exposure with this technique. Early post-operative hypotony, which means like hypotony at day one, which means that you didn't ligate very well. Uh, I only had one out of those 100. The late post-operative hypotony, which means that you have uh, like failure of encapsulation or like delayed healing, um, which at, at about six or seven weeks when the tube does open at the end, and then like you get the hypotony or the hypotony complications. I had 13 and the 100, seven of them had a choroidal effusion. One was suprachoroidal um, hemorrhage that actually resolved spontaneously. We didn't need to uh, operate on it. Um, need in a... Um, uh, for a second surgical intervention, 10 had, uh, you know, a um, 10 out of the 100 had a second surgical intervention. One of them was tube redirection because the tube was too close to the cornea. One of them was a tube plug. This is an ab internal 2-0 proline tube and uh, hypotony that is not responding to repeated injections of viscoelastic in the anterior chamber. And uh, three of them needed a second um, glaucoma drainage implant, and five of them, uh, we performed a transplerocyclophotocoagulation to reduce the pressure for. Uh, this is the case where I needed to use the um, 2 zero proline, had uh, choroidal uh, effusions that were not responding, kept injecting uh, uh, provisc and helon and the AC uh, several times. Every time the patient comes in next day, again with the choroidals, and um, pressures were very low, like two or three. We're concerned about the, um, you know, suprachoroidal hemorrhage. And um, then we did the procedure where we uh, tucked a 2-0 proline inside the tube ab interno. And um, this is like, you know, when the, uh, the B scan, when the choroidals had resolved. Um, when the tube is obstructed with fibrin, sometimes after the tube opens, like, you know, uh, some of the, um, um, you know, inflammatory material that is um, subconjunctival would actually go into the anterior chamber and cause an anterior chamber reaction, sometimes even cause tube occlusion. And in that case, we uh, uh, inject alteplase or um, intracameral uh, TPA uh, also uh, in the, um, uh, on the slit lamp. Here we see, you know, with a 30 gauge needle, inject some um, intracameral TPA, it should be prepared by a compounding pharmacy. And results are amazingly within minutes, within minutes, the tube would open. Thank you so much. Dr. Mohammed Sayed, shukran al Mahadra al Jamila. Well, if you had Mark Swell. السلام <laughs> Uh, situation, uh, patient with neoscular glaucoma and vitreous hemorrhage and diabetic retinopathy. And diabetic retinopathy, vitreous hemorrhage, neoscular glaucoma. The uh, strategy for the lag, and also in the same session, we uh, do the treatment of the device and vitrectomy, or two sessions. This is the doctor one. Uh, وفين نحط الامبلانت انتيريور ام بستيريور في الفيتريس ونوع التمبنيد اتفضل شكرا um, so um, ال, ال pressure كان كام في الحاله دي؟ 
ايش تفضل؟ نيو فورتي اند توتالي كلوزد is when we have very high pressures that need to come down very quickly when the pressure is like 40 or 50 and that's typically in uh, cases of neovascular glaucoma and uh, the other situation is uh, when we um, uh, have uveitic glaucoma and then uveitic glaucoma we're worried we're more concerned about hypotony and um, you know the risk of hypotony is uh, significantly reduced with using the amid valve versus the other um, tube implants. So yes, for a uh, neovascular glaucoma, and I know that there are many people with different opinions about this, but this is what I do. I do it on a weekly basis, several cases, and with great success. So we do, I do Avastin or like, you know, um, there's no Avastin here, so Lucentis. Um, um, and like, you know, a, a day later, I would do an Ahmed valve. And um, once the, the eye is quieter, pressure is better. If the patient is phacic, I would go ahead and remove the cataract and do PRP. If the patient is uh, pseudophacic, I would do the PRP right away. Um, uh, the injection and the tube, I do them myself. I would refer the patient to the retina specialist for the uh, PRP. Um, I do the cataract surgery myself as well. Now, if the patient is pseudophacic, if the patient is pseudophacic, I... Um, you know, may opt to put the tube in the sulcus. And, um, you know, for me, tube in the sulcus is a no-brainer in a patient with uh, um, synechiae because when you have a peripheral anterior synechiae and you place the tube in the anterior chamber, the tube is, um, you know, um, eventually going to be very close to the cornea on the long run. And, um, you know, the, the corneal edema is going to get worse and, and um, you know, I wouldn't want to do that. So the only uh, occasion in which I would do an anterior chamber tube would be in the, um, in the, uh, 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 a, a fake patient. And then we have a fake patient then, you know, and we have a lens in, we're not going to take the lens out because the eye is very inflamed. The, the cornea is, is uh, you know, um, hazy and edematous then I would put the tube in the anterior chamber, but otherwise I would put it in the posterior chamber. Why wouldn't I put the tube in the vitreous cavity? First of all, you know, the, the patient needs very good vitrectomy, including uh, peripheral shaving. If we don't have peripheral shaving, you do not put the, the, the tube in the, um, in the vitreous cavity. And, um, you know, it's very difficult in that situation, like, you know, of neovascular glaucoma, the eye is very, like, you know, um, you know, the pressure is high, you know, you have some vitreous hemorrhage at the time and all that, like, you know, to do a proper vitrectomy without lowering the pressure first. Um, and um, after you lower the pressure, you would have, like, you know, clearer corneas and you can go ahead and do the vitrectomy and all that. So, no, I would prefer to do the, the glaucoma surgery first, then refer the patient to the retina specialist to do the uh, retina procedure. Thank you very much, thank you. Uh, very good. Uh, Dr. Dr. Muhammad, uh, uh, my question about Ahmed Khalil Bath. Uh, 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 my, my, my question about Ahmed Khalil Bath, why? it is placed more anteriorly comparing to other valve or null device or non-valve device. Is there any benefit from that? No, no, the, the benefit is the ease of insertion. So like, you know, and instead of like, you know, having to like, you know, have great exposure and um, a, a lot of pulling down and struggling to place the, um, you know, the sutures you know, about 11 millimeters, like, you know, I put the, 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 the eyelets of the Ahmed clear path, eight millimeters or eight and a half millimeters. And, you know, I would end up with the, the plate starting at 11 millimeters still because it's like 2.5 millimeter eyelets. So, um, you know, it, it just gives you that advantage. Like the other tubes, the eyelets are within the plate itself. 
But in the arm of clear path, the eyelids are, within, are not within the plate. They are anterior to the plate. Welcome to Dr. Muhammad. I'm Dr. Asam, Shamahi, veterinary surgeon. Uh, I would like to, uh, to ask you some uh, situations we are facing uh, in vitreoretinal glaucoma after vitreoretinal surgery and uh, after removing of the silicone and the eye is filled with saline and tension is high. Uh, Ahmed, uh, valve uh, in such situation will cause, in many cases we, uh, we tried, cause too much hypotony because the eye is filled uh, with saline. What do you prefer? Do you have some experience in such a uh, situation? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, hypotony after armed valve is self-limiting. So I've never seen an armed valve uh, hypotony, um, you know, become a much bigger issue. Um, so uh, my, what I would do, and, and that's what I do with every armed valve, but particularly in an eye that is uh, vitrectomized, is, um, you know, just like you know, fill the eye with viscoelastic, the anterior chamber with viscoelastic when you, I overfill it, like, you know, until I see the viscoelastic coming out of the paracentesis. Um, and typically, you would not have a hypotony situation. And if it did, you can very easily reform the anterior chamber the very next day. And in a matter of a week, I haven't seen an amid valve that continues to have hypotony after one week. If the eye is filled with saline, the whole yeah, eye is still, like we do that all the time. If you, if you fill the eye with viscoelastic, yeah, so we do, like, you know, half of my patients are vitrectomized patients. You yeah, have some cases, such a case? Did you face some cases in such a case? All the time, all the time. Yeah. Okay. Of course. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. Uh, last question, uh, please. It seems uh, that you prefer the Ahmed clear path uh, in your work, uh, but you said there is ten cases you need to do a second surgical intervention. So, what what was your second uh, surgical intervention? What do you prefer apart from uh, Ahmed clear path? If Ahmed no, I, I mentioned those. I mentioned those. So uh, the ten cases that needed the uh, second surgical intervention, one of them was for hypotony. I needed to occlude the tube, and I did the uh, you know the 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 tucking of the two O proline, and the um, you know and and let me go back to the slide. Uh, what I meant is um, another procedure. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, ten of them had one of them had tube redirection. The tube was too close to the cornea. One of them had the tube plug, and I put uh, three of them needed a second tube. So I put in a an infranasal uh, clear path, and uh, five of them I I put in a uh, uh, I, I I I did a TSCPC a transclerosis photocoagulation. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. But but this is this is actually even better than um, the rate of reoperations for the tube uh, trabeculectomy and the uh, barvel 350. If you look at the results of the TVT study and the PTVT study, risk of complications was um, around 40 percent. Dr. Mohammed, but check your hadrat al muhadra. Wa ahl Masr. Assalamu alaikum.